This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. Do you feel like rejoicing? Amen. Well, if you don't, it said we will. Okay, so I'm going to ask you this morning to stand. We're going to open in prayer. And I don't know if most of well, you probably all know that yesterday was a national day of prayer. And I got up this morning and I felt I heard the Lord speak something to us in, in Bakersfield. And I didn't hear a loud voice, an inside voice. You hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And I felt he said to me, where were my people? They were silent yesterday. And it kind of hit me. We were silent. Were you silent yesterday? Did you pray yesterday for our, for our nation, for our city? And I thought every year I go down to the courthouse and we have a national day of prayer and it's filled with people. Well, this weekend it was filled with protesters. And I heard the Lord said, my people were silent. And it broke my heart this morning. So I don't want us to be silent this morning. We're his people, right? Amen. And the Bible tells us, if my people who call by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will heal their land. How many know we need our land healed? Amen. And our land is part of our family. It's part of our, it's, it's Bakersfield. And we're known kind of as the, the Christian belt in Bakersfield. And we didn't even have prayer yesterday like we usually do. So I'm just going to ask you, maybe you're not used to raising your hands, but the Bible says to sing to the Lord. It says to raise holy hands. So let's just lift our hands to the Lord and repent of our silentness and ask him to heal our land. So, Father, this morning, we are your people, God. We are called by your name, Lord. And we lift our, our hands to you. You said to lift your hands, Lord. These are holy hands because you, cause you're holy, God. So, God, we repent today, Lord, for, for our not praying, God, for being prayerless yesterday. We repent, repent Lord, because we know, God, that you're going to do a great and mighty thing. And so we ask today to heal our land, heal California. We pray for California. We pray for Bakersfield, God. We pray for a mighty revival. Yes, Your word said yes. in the last days there will be a mighty revival. And God, we want to be part of it, God. So, God, we ask you to heal our land today. And, Father, the people that are sitting here, those that need a personal healing, I pray for them, God. Yes. You're still the healer of bodies, souls, you, and minds. So thank we you, thank you, Jesus, what you're going to do together today. Because you said we're two or more together. You're here. And, God, you're here. So we just give you praise. And God's people said amen, amen. 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 worship our king come on come let us bow at his feet he has done great things yes he has see what our savior has done see how his love overcomes he has done great things and he has done great things Oh, hero, oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive, break every chain, oh, God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh, God. You have done great things. been faithful through every storm yes he has you'll be faithful forevermore you have done great things and i know you will do it again for your promise is yes and amen you will do great things God, you do great things. Oh, hero, oh, 
hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken the life. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God. I've done great things. Let's sing hallelujah with all we have this morning. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. You've done great things. Let's sing it again. Hallelujah, God. Above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things, oh hero, oh hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captive, break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Oh, God, you have done great things. Oh, God, you have done great things. Oh, he's done great things. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, Lord. You've done great things, Lord Jesus. We look forward to what you're doing right now in our lives. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place. Thank you, Father. And you are matchless in grace and mercy. There is nowhere we can hide from your love. You are steadfast, never failing. You are faithful. And no creation is in awe of who you are. You're the healer of the sick and the broken. You are comfort for every heart in lost, our King, our Savior forever, for eternity we will sing of all you done, oh, for eternity we will sing of all you done, we sing God with us, God for us, nothing come against no one can stand between us God with us and God for us nothing can come against no one can stand between us Your heart, it moves with compassion. There is life, there is healing in your love. You're the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. For eternity, we will sing of all you've done. We sing God with us. God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us, God with us, God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand between us, oh, this 
stopping Nothing can stand between us Where there was death, you brought life, Lord Where there was fear, you brought courage When I was afraid, you were with me You lifted me up You lifted me up When there's death Where there was death, you brought life, Lord We thank you, Lord Where there was fear, you brought courage When I was When I was afraid, you were with me to me one more time where there was death you brought life Lord oh we thank you Lord where there was fear you brought courage when I was afraid you were with me you lifted me you lifted me up you lifted me you lifted me to me, oh, you lifted me, lifted me, lifted me up. We see, we see God with us, God for us. Nothing can come against, no one can stand between us, and God with us, God for us. Come against no one can stand between us. Oh, there's nothing, Lord, there's no one like you, always faithful, never failing. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Let's sing, God, with us. God with us, God for us, nothing can come against, no one can stand. God with us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for what you did on Calvary for us, Lord. Nothing can stand between us. We thank you, Jesus. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound, drenched in tears. Thank you, Lord. The entrance sealed by heavy storm. Messiah still and all alone. Let's praise his name this morning. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days we will sing. Third at break of dawn, 
the Son of Heaven rose again. Oh, trample death, where is your sting? The angels roll for Christ the King. Praise the name of the Lord our God. Who oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, O oh, Lord, O oh, Lord our God. He shall return in robes of white the blazing sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the same my gaze transfixed on Jesus face oh praise his name Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. Let's sing it again. Oh, praise. Oh, praise the name. Of the Lord our God, oh praise, oh praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise, oh Lord, oh Lord our God. Everything we have, let's go. Oh praise, oh praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for meeting us here today, Lord, on this blessed Sunday morning, Lord. Praise your name, the Most High, King forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated for a, just a few minutes. We're going to do some announcements. I really just want to keep worshiping, but we'll do some announcements, and we'll get back in the worship here in a second. But uh, uh, just some important things to let you know about. Today's the last day to turn in the baby bottles filled with uh, change or cash uh, for the Bakersfield Family Pregnancy Center. You can drop those off at the tithe table back over there. It's the next step tent, and can't see who's over there, but they'll take it from you. They'll also take your tithes and your offering as you walk in and as you walk out. There's a little drop box right there, so you can put it in there. Thank you for your faithfulness, by the way. Also, tonight, you don't want to miss it. Pastor Jeanette is leading us uh, in online prayer at 530 on Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo. And uh, we're going to be doing a National Day of Prayer today, okay? So show up. You know, it's real easy. All you do is pick up your phone. You push Facebook, push in Bakersfield First Assembly. It pops up. We do it for about 30 to 45 minutes, and then you can go on your merry way, do your other things you got to do. But uh, join us tonight. We'd love to have you, and we're just going to pray for our nation, pray for our city, pray for our uh, state, all of the above, for everybody that's here, our county representative, city representative, all those people. We're going to pray for them tonight. So join us at 530. Also, don't forget, this coming Wednesday at 630, we have our Bible study uh, at 6.30. Don't want to miss that. Uh, stay tuned for that. And then also on Wednesday, our BFA Youth Watch Party is at 6.30. So also, 
If you are youth from 7th to 12th grade, we'd love to see you there. They do it in a Zoom format, and it's, it is a live. It's not a pre-recorded. It's a live deal. So if you'd like a link to that for your high schooler or junior higher, call the school uh, not the school office, call the church office, and they'll get you a link if you don't already have one. But I'm sure most of you already have one. Um, next Sunday, Pastor James will be back right here in the courtyard at 8 a.m. So pray for him this week that he comes home safely and him, him and Jolene and that they would be healthy and they wouldn't have any uh, delay on their way back. So uh, are you excited for that? I'm excited for that. Um, and then next Sunday, don't forget, 8 a.m. And then we have our live stream at 11. Um, and then we rebroadcast at 1, 3, and 7. So that is the announcement. So let's, uh, let's take up the Lord's offering. So again, on your way out, if you didn't have a chance to drop it in there, you can drop it in on the way out. Or you can continue doing it the way you've been doing it. If you want to send it in the mail or drop it by at the church office during the week, uh, that is fine as well. God, thank you for your people. God, thank you for their faithfulness, Lord Jesus, to uh, the tithes and the offerings, Lord God, that we receive each week to make sure that we can continue ministry, Lord. I know of so many churches right now that are struggling, Lord. Small churches that are going to close, Lord Jesus. We are blessed. We are blessed. Thank you for our faithful, faithful congregants, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would ten, return that to them tenfold. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing another song. You're welcome to stand or you can remain seated, whatever you feel like doing. But let's just really take these next few minutes, moments to, to really worship the King. We all gathered here today in his name. Is that correct? So let's not take it for granted. Let's all worship him this morning. that laid between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night the cry of Tore through the shadows of my soul. We thank you, Lord. The work is finished. The end is written. With Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross, the cross has spoken, I am forgiven, the King of kings calls he is own beautiful Savior. I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Let's sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope sing it again hallelujah hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah, hallelujah. And death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name in jesus christ my living hope 
Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Let's sing it again. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim. Christ, my living hope. Oh, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living in Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh God, you are my living hope. Let's give Him praise this morning. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms may all pass away, but there's something about that name yes there is there's just something about that name Jesus he's the answer to your question today Jesus God, we pray your Holy Spirit would just be upon Pastor Frank, Lord, that as he brings the word this morning. Thank you, God, for his faithfulness, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm loving the Holy Spirit right now. Jesus. Jesus. Praise your name. Praise your name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.
What a delight it is to be with you back in Bakersfield again. God bless you. Uh, and it is wonderful to feel the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. I want to take it just a moment now. You may not need to, but I just want to let the Holy Spirit know I'm available. <laughs> I'm submitted to Him. Oh, sweet Spirit of God, move in this time together. Draw us into your presence and show us Jesus in freshness and in power. In Christ's name, amen. I mentioned last week that there are four defining truths of this church, and they ought to be at the core of every church, and that is we believe in salvation. Thank God. If it wasn't for that, the other truths wouldn't matter much to us. That's basic, that there is only one way to know God, and that is Jesus Christ. He paid the full penalty. And then since Jesus came, and even before that in the Old Testament, the Hebrew prophets has let us know that God is a healer. Not only healed in the days of Jesus, He healed in the Old Testament, He continues to heal today, and we continue to need His healing because we're a broken people. We're broken in our spirits, our souls, and in our bodies. I have good news. Someday the healer, Someday, the healer will see to it that there are no injuries left over in that resurrection day. There is no sickness nor disease. Sorrow and weeping will be gone. Said it, the tears are wiped away. That tells me when we get there, there may be some tears. He's going to wipe them away. And then there is what I want to talk to you about this morning in a defining truth. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. The continuing presence of Jesus on the earth today is through the Spirit of the living God. That fourth defining truth is the fact that Jesus will return. He promised He would be coming back, and this time it would not be in a manger. He will split open the skies, and the trumpet shall sound. We which are alive and remain shall go to meet him in the air. But the dead in Christ shall go first. And so I hope it's not this church that goes first. That would mean that we'd be the dead in Christ. Obviously not. The Holy Spirit is ready to strengthen and enable you in your Christian walk. I remember when I came to know Jesus Christ. I didn't realize that there was more. I was saved. I got my fire insurance. And then I found out we're supposed to grow and read our Bible. So I began to do that. And in the church that I was in, they didn't talk much about the Holy Spirit. But I got to the book of Acts and started asking questions. I was told that that wasn't for today. That's not what I read in the book of Acts. There's a whole extra dimension of God's power that can be yours, and I realize it could be mine. See, Jesus came on His rescue mission, and after His rescue mission was accomplished, He gave us a replacement. The replacement stepped in here. Who in the world could replace Jesus? You've got it, the Holy Spirit. Because he's known as the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And if you're still reading the King James, the Holy Ghost. It's all the same words in the original language. I want to, each of us to understand today, we are not talking about just the power of God. The Holy Spirit will empower you. The Holy Spirit is not electricity. It's not some dynamo. It's not something you plug into. It's not an active force or power. The Holy Spirit is a person, the third person of the triune God. Now, I know some people haven't quite got that figured out, and you know what? The minute you get God figured out, maybe you've got it wrong. He's bigger than me. He's bigger than you. And to wrap our small brains around Him, it's fun trying. Go ahead. Keep it up. But let me just illustrate it in a fairly simple way. You see, the Scripture is clear. 
that there is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they're all referred to as God. The Holy Spirit, not a force or an it in Romans 8, 16. Paul says the Spirit himself bears witness. And again, King James, that's what I cut my teeth on, memorized all my scriptures in, but the King James the Spirit says the Spirit itself, that is a mistranslation. New King James got it a little bit better. That's why we have more than one translation. The Spirit himself bears witness that we are the children of God. And Jesus explained that he would send this Holy Spirit to be available to each and every one of us. Now, here's my simple illustration. And it's really simple. Most people think of the Trinity as one plus one plus one. And anybody that has no simple math knows that's three. That is not the Trinity. The Trinity is mathematical. It is, hear O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And that word one from Deuteronomy 6.4 is one as in a bundle of sticks. There's, there is plurality in the one. And in math, it is one raised to the third power. One times one times one is one. And this morning, I trust that you will find what it means, if you have not already, to have one raised to the third power to empower your lives. Jesus said these words in the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 16. I will ask the Father. He will give you another comforter to be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. He lives with you and He will be in you. Oh, the ministry of the Holy Spirit has so many facets, so many wonderful avenues. The Holy Spirit is present in salvation. The Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ and then later to be empowered. Jesus, according to the Scripture, baptizes you into the Holy Spirit. I'm not sure I've got it all figured out, but I know it's a wonderful walk to be empowered by the Spirit of God. That promise that Jesus made was rapidly fulfilled, and when it was fulfilled, often in dramatic fashion. And sometimes in these modern days when God fulfills that scripture in dramatic fashion, people do odd things because when there's more power, there's more power running through you than you've ever experienced before, you may behave oddly. Any of you ever been really happy in the Lord and people thought there was something wrong with you? Just wave at me. Yeah. It's because they don't understand. They've never experienced that themselves. But the Holy Spirit invaded the hearts and minds of early Christians. And this empowerment is referred to in different ways. Some places it's called being filled with the Spirit. Others, we have you received the Holy Spirit. In other places, the promises. I will, you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I think it comes from the issue of that word baptize. It comes from a Greek word, and let me tell you the Greek word, baptize. <laughs> we just borrowed it right out of Greek and brought it into English. And it was a word that was used for dyeing of cloth. So when you took the cloth and immersed it, baptized it, not only was it immersed, it was every fiber soaked up the dye that it was put into. God wants us to soak up every bit of Him. He immerses us in the Holy Spirit. He fills us with the Holy Spirit. And I don't know about you, but I've need, needed several fillings because I have an issue. It tends, I tend to leak. And I need a freshness. And that's why Jesus told us that there was an unending supply. Acts 2, 4. The scripture says that they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, what were the indications that this had happened? Well, there was a sign uh, of the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Now, that could easily happen. We're outdoors here. But, uh, and they were an open courtyard there. But there was also something else a little unusual. There were... Cloven tongues of fire came descending. That would get your attention, wouldn't it? Yeah. And as it lit upon the believers, they began to speak in languages as the Spirit gave them utterance, which means they didn't know what they were saying, 
but the scripture was indicating they were known languages of people that were listening on that day. And we are, it's recorded in the Bible that they were speaking the wonderful works of God. Let me tell you, when you're under the influence of the Holy Spirit, when you're under the influence of God's presence, you will be glorifying God and not yourself. On that day they spoke, and the colloquial term is they spoke in tongues. There's no mystery here. These are just languages. The God who scattered people throughout the earth by giving them different languages now brings a unity by pouring out his spirit and saying, I'm in control of the wildest member of your body, your tongue, if you'll give it to me. Timid disciples, these are the things that people saw. We don't see the, we don't see the fire falling from heaven. Not again in the scriptures. The rushing mighty wind doesn't seem to happen all the time, but there's certain things that persisted. And one of those things that persisted was speaking in a language that you did not know. It was miraculous. And then another thing that persisted was timid disciples became bold apostles. And I'm not going to say that if you get baptized in the Holy Spirit or fresh filling, you'll turn into an apostle. But you'll at least be an epistle known and read of all men that Jesus Christ is alive. The power of God brings boldness to us. And that is the real purpose behind this. But there's many other things. It means that the good news, the gospel, crossed ethnic lines. It broke down gender barriers. It went across geographical lines. And people from all around the world that were at the temple of that day heard the wonderful works of God and the word of God spread throughout the earth from Jerusalem. It also means this. The gifts continued. God blessed his church with spiritual gifts. You'll find nine of them listed in 1 Corinthians 12. In Ephesians 5, you'll find five more gifts listed for gifts to the church as officers to the church. And in Romans 12, you'll find again another list of motivational gifts. Somebody said, well, we believe in the full gospel. We believe in all nine gifts. What about the rest of them? There's more than nine. God is the great gift giver. And he wants to give to you not only the gift of salvation, but the gift of the Holy Spirit. And all kinds of individual gifts. These gifts are not given so I can walk around and say, well, I've got goosebumps. That feels real good. Do that again. But I'm going to tell you, it feels good to be touched by the Holy Spirit. Enjoy. Neither are these gifts given so I can impress you. Or you can impress somebody. Oh, I've got spiritual gifts. I had a good friend. I loved him dearly. And he had had angels appear to him. You know, I've had... Friends, I've been praying with, oh, God's showing me a vision. I want to know what channel they're on, because I can never see those things. My friend said, some people think, have thought, wow, you're spiritual to see angels. He says, no, I'm so hard-headed, it takes that to get me to follow God. They're gifts, you don't earn them, you don't deserve them. But God is gracious in the giving of his gifts, spiritual gifts. This saturation of the Holy Spirit increased kingdom power among God's people. It gave them empowerment to do more, to go higher, and reach further than ever before. And I have good news. This empowerment is available for each and every one of us. Yeah, but Pastor, Pastor Frank, I'm old. What do you think I am? Well, I'm too old, young. I heard that. I'm old. <laughs> Doesn't matter what your level of education is. Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter what your ethnic background may be. Because when you've come to Jesus, you've been born again. And we share His DNA. The DNA of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he's ready to empower you in the great family of God. These spiritual gifts blossom into miraculous demonstrations. In so much on that day of Pentecost, people watching it said, you're all drunk. 
They weren't drunk. They didn't have time to get drunk. It was too early in the day. It started at midnight, I guess. But that wasn't the issue. The issue was that there were hard hearts that did not want to see God's power released and free in the community. The saturation of the Holy Spirit is what the church needs fresh today. As we were worshiping, I heard it about struggling churches, and I've heard it personally. And there are churches that have seen a loss of more than a third of their people, and, and it's questionable whether they as a church entity will survive. I have good news for you. The church will survive. The church will survive what we're going through. This is nothing compared to what's happening in other places around the world. We not only will survive, we will thrive. And that's not just a nice little saying that rolls off my tongue. It is the reality. Because God is going to empower His people as they get hungry and hungrier for Him. Because that's what this is all about. This empowerment is available to every one of us. But not everybody's receptive to this empowerment. Paul wrote to a church that was more than 600 miles from Jerusalem, the church at Ephesus, and he wrote these words in Ephesians chapter 5. Do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. So we want to understand the Lord's will. Be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. He says, not only can you just rejoice together in the ways you understand but you can speak in spiritual songs. And the indication of those spiritual songs in the Scripture are those are songs that uh, uh, in a language that we do not understand. So you can not only speak in tongues, you can sing in tongues. There's a way to do it. And 1 Corinthians 14, 12, 13, and 14 tells us how to keep all of that decently in order. But then we get a wonderful and marvelous illustration when the Apostle Peter, and how many of you particularly like me, enjoy the Apostle Peter because he's such a klutz. Any of you out there? Okay. He is so human. And I go, if God can use Peter, he can use me. I, I like to say, and I might have said it several times here before, you know, one of the things about Peter is he took his foot out of his mouth so he had room to put the other one in. What a man. Just as human as you and me. And here is Peter, happy, filled with the Spirit, still growing in Christ because, you see, he had issues. There's people he didn't like. So God gives him a vision. And he shows him these unclean animals. And he's to kill and eat. Oh, I will never touch anything unclean. Well, God wasn't concerned so much about the animals as I want you to go knock on the door. Why, it's Somebody from Cornelius' house. Cornelius was a, one of those, a Gentile. Uh, just so you understand those, for most of us, 90%, that's us. Unclean. So God had dealt by his spirit with the apostle Peter, and so he goes to Cornelius' house. Now, I have, this, I have this idea, and I don't know if it's accurate, but I have a feeling, all right, God, you're sending him here. I'm preaching to this Roman, and I'm going to get it done. I'm getting out of here. I'm not even making an altar call because I know that you really don't care about these people. So while he's preaching, the Holy Spirit descends, and they begin to speak in tongues and prophesy. He doesn't even get a chance to circumvent God. I'm sure none of us have ever thought about things like that, that we, all right, God, you kind of forced me into this situation, but I'll get out of here before anything happens that I don't want to happen. No. The gifts of the Spirit were poured out. The Jewish believers were astonished. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit at Cornelius' house, and they then followed the Lord in the waters of baptism, and the good news is now going to be preached to non-Jews. Who ever heard of such a thing? Well, Jesus did the same thing. It wasn't that he excluded. He says he came to the Jews first because that's where the gospel originated. 
Acts 11, the apostles and the brothers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Oh my goodness. You had fellowship. The Holy Spirit will lead you places <laughs> you never thought you would go. I remember as a young Christian, they would say things like, well, you know, that's not a place Christians go. Do you, do you think God would go there? And I found out later, God, God goes places I have no business going to. There's nothing so dark but what the light of God can enter. There's no place so hard but what God can take and send his disciple, his chosen one, to bring the light of God. Never be afraid, be empowered. The Holy Spirit is our enablement. And God commanded Peter by a vision to go to the Gentiles. He had to steer vital truths around Peter's mental roadblocks. And God wants to enlarge your vision and my vision. So sometimes he has to overcome our mental roadblocks. When I say mental roadblocks, uh, how many of you have a pretty good idea what I'm talking about? Just wave at me. Oh, th four of us, six of us. Oh, it's getting better now. Sometimes we have personal mental roadblocks. Peter did. Sometimes our roadblocks are spiritual. We think, okay, we're the chosen ones. We're the only ones. It's that holier-than-thou attitude. Peter had to overcome that. We may have a corporate community. We're the people of God. And we find out that God loves everybody. It's a growing process. After all, aren't we all just what the Holy Spirit drug in off the street? I'm speaking for myself. You'll have to speak for yourself. So Peter's defense is our enlightenment. He let us clearly know that the words of Jesus were being fulfilled from Acts 1.8, that you shall receive power and the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. He learned that the kingdom of God is greater than Israel. He learned what Paul would tell the church at Galatia when they tried to exclude people from ministry based upon their background. Paul said, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are one in Christ Jesus. Ladies, you understand the church isn't jumping on the wagon of today's liberation? That they, we were, the ladies were liberated in Christ Jesus when he rose from the grave, when he made all one, neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free. And it's a whole sermon in itself, and I'm not going to go there today. I don't have the time. There's not a reason in the world in my Bible why both men and women cannot serve in all ministries of the church. There you go, just to stir up, and now you have, some of you may have something to pray for about me. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, was overriding all of culture. The Roman culture, the Greeks, and the Jews are now one family. He brought us from religion into a relationship by the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit hovers ready to fill or baptize at Jesus' command. That's the same Holy Spirit that hovered, that moved upon the face of the waters in Genesis 1 to bring forth life and fulfill God's Word going forth. And the Holy Spirit is still fulfilling God's Word going forth. And from the front to the back, from all the sides around, that Holy Spirit wants to have a relationship that is intimate and powerful with every one of us. I won't go into it today, but I stand here today in the weakness of my flesh. But I stand here in the power of the Holy Spirit. He empowers us. He sustains us. He emboldens us. 
So Peter's defense is our empowerment. The Gentiles were filled with God's Spirit. They spoke with tongues like on the day of Pentecost. And the subject was the wonderful works of God. It's never me. Look at my gift. It's the wonderful works of God. One thing I think we need to know that when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, it doesn't make us a superior Christian over others that have not been. It makes us a superior Christian over what we were before. Don't compare yourself to others. Compare yourself in your progress. And after being filled with the Spirit, I was a much better Christian. Not as good as I still need to be. As Paul said in his old age, I say in my old age, I have not yet attained. But someday, <laughs> someday, it may when the tr- be when the trumpet sounds, but I'm going to continue to grow, continue to be filled with the Spirit. Will you go with me? Continue to grow and be filled and empowered by the Spirit of God. There are five records in the Acts of the Apostles of people being filled. The day of Pentecost, they spoke in tongues. The Samaritan revival, they, we don't know what happened there. Something unusual happened. We can assume it may have been the same thing. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Cornelius' house, they spoke in tongues and prophesied. The Ephesian believers in Acts 19, they spoke in tongues. Those are some of the things that have happened. Let me tell you why you and I need this empowerment. I think a good way to illustrate it was... A story I read about a baby bear that was separated a bit from its mother. The cub was getting a drink, playing with the water, but the cub did not notice is that there was a mountain lion watching him closely. He wandered down a little canyon through some bushes, and the mountain lion was continuing its stalking, maybe even licking its lips. And finally, it came to a place where The lion knew that there was no way out of this box canyon. And so the mountain lion began to move in slowly. Closer and closer, and the bear cub suddenly spotted the mountain lion. The little bear cub raised up. (laughs) Not very big, but as big as he could get. And you know that scrawny, scratchy little noise they'll make because they haven't learned that big growl yet? Well, he went to make it, and suddenly... There was a roar that vibrated the mountains. And I'm sure that cub thought for a moment, how did I do that? The mountain lion turned and ran. He'd go hungry that day because behind the cub was Mama Bear standing up. And folks, I know the Holy Spirit is symbolized by a dove. But sometimes, when you most need him, he will be, I know, I'm mixing genders, mama bear. Roar! He will embolden you to do the powerful thing, the wonderful thing that needs to be done. So this baptism, this filling is for every believer. And I felt in my heart as I prepared for today that I needed to motivate God's people again to be refilled with the Spirit. Acts 2, 39, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's the scripture. We have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. We've received his presence. The Bible is clear that whoever believes in me, Jesus said, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow for him. By this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were to later receive. He wants us to be filled with the spirit. He wants us to not only be filled with the Holy Spirit, but when that happens, maybe you've been seeking to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit touches you and you worship Him and you're praising Him, give expression to the language of praise rising within you. You don't force yourself to speak in tongues. He gives utterance. And this is not about tongues. This is about the Holy Spirit. Let happen God's miraculous and wonderful thing when we receive a freshness of the Holy Spirit. And empowerment, Acts 2, 4, on that day, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Ask to receive. That's what we need to do. Jesus clearly said in Luke 11, if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? And sometimes it takes a little more than asking. Sometimes 
you have to wait. You're not waiting for God to give the Holy Spirit. You're waiting for yourself to get to the place where you can receive the Holy Spirit. In all of His freshness, in all of His power, Luke 24, Jesus says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry, wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. How many of you would say, Pastor Frank, I need a fresh filling of God's Spirit. Just wave your hand at me, and God will see that. It can happen in your car. Keep your eyes open. Don't drive with them closed. It can happen in your house. It can happen in this courtyard. It can happen in church. It can happen anywhere where we get alone with God. It can happen with people laying hands on you and praying for you. It can happen when nobody's touching you because the touch that you need is heaven's touch. Come, Holy Spirit. How many of you would say, I need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and I'm open to whatever God wants to do in my life in that regard? Would you lift your hand before God right now? And we're going to just pray. Father, you see our hands. We open ourselves and we declare to you, we're available. We're available. We want to be empowered with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You've given us the great gift of salvation. We're available. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, in freshness and power. For we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. And as our worship team comes, what a great time would be as we just stand in His presence to simply be an open vessel for His Spirit to descend upon you on this Lord's day. God bless you and keep you in the name of the Savior.